Welcome to Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast, episode 66. All righty then. Um, my Happy name, Monday. Yes. Uh, my name is Talia, also known as Franciscan Gypsy on Ravelry Clerk and everywhere else. And this is my, I rolled out of bed, my hair looked like crap, and I threw a hat on my head look. Um... Won't know the difference. Won't know the difference. Yeah. We'll never know the difference. <laughs> ah. ah, ah, and this is. We won't know the difference. Oh, what's your name? What's your name? what's your name? What's your name? I am Marlisha, also known as Lady Furnico. <laughs> stop it. I'm stop it. I'm Plurk. I'm Ravelry. I'm Fitbit. And um. I'm known as Shadow Light or Shadow Light One on uh, Writer's Voice and some other writer sites I can't remember, and as Marlisha everywhere else. Ah. Anyway, it is Monday. It is Monday. I worked last night, September the ninth. And if you would like to get something to eat or to drink or both, please feel free to put us on pause or ignore us while you do get it, hot or cold. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you want. I sound like it hot. I like it hot. I'm having chai tea, Michelle. We've been discussing having chai tea today. I'm clerk. <laughs> but we're having chai tea. Today. I had I have been a bad podcasting person. I have not been on Plurk. I have not been on Ravelry. I may have poked my head on Ravelry for like five seconds, but I've been kind of obsessed with the projects I've been working on. The products? Projects. Ah, uh, projects. Okay. Um but I think that you well hang on. I we guess we have to follow our new thingy, publicity. Publicity. We have two new members. Yay! Um, the, Indeed. The first one is Wildberry Knits, and I'm sorry I couldn't find her real name, but that's her rab name, and uh, so we're welcome. We're glad to have her. Welcome aboard, Wildberry Knits. Um, and Allison Roseboom, I think is her last name. Her name is Allison. Welcome aboard, Allison. We're glad to have you both with us. Yep. Yay. Um, and then we have part of, oh, we want to welcome our old members, too. Yes, thank you for re- <laughs> have, joining us. Haven't forgotten about you. Um, we're glad that you're still with us. And apparently not just knitters watch us. I had a coworker stop me and say she watched us the other day because I posted this to Facebook. So, hi to our non-knitting peeps as well. Yeah, great to have you with us. Uh-huh. Um, with the Podiversary Cal. This is the last week for the Podiversary Cal, so if you want to get whips in or um, your finished objects in, whichever, either one will be eligible for um, whatever prizes may be on offer, probably patterns. Mm -hmm. And so you have between now and next, whenever we podcast, whether it's Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. Yeah, it'll be right before we leave for retreat. Just before we leave for retreat. Um, Because I have... Two more shifts before vacation. I don't think we'll be missing a podcast. Well, no, we might miss one. It might be late. The one when we're coming home from retreat. I think we'll still get it, though. It might be a little late. But we intend to go ahead and podcast if at all possible. Um, One last bit of publicity is the second annual Toy Along, the 2013 Toy Along. Ty and I were discussing it. We're not going to start it quite so early this year. Um, simply yeah, last because, year we started it right before retreat. Yeah, and since we're so busy and there are many other crocheting knit-alongs going on, we decided that we would start it October 1st. Mm-hmm. So the, the toy along will run from October 1st mm-hmm. until December 31st, so you can use it <clears throat> for charities, mm-hmm. um, for Christmas and things. And, toys uh, for Tots. Toys for Tots, Christmas gifts, um, uh, New Year's gifts, just what you want to do forever and for whatever reason. And you can also finish whatever toys are already on the hooks and needles mm-hmm. that can be entered, as long as they were started in January of 2013, I think. Because mm-hmm. this is not a finish all of things. But if you started it, the toy, it has been languishing since January 1st of 2013 then you can go ahead and enter it if you finish it. Yeah. Um, I know that with Toy I Want to Start, my my uh, Master Chief will probably still stay there, you know, whimpering at me. Yeah. But um, Sort of like my uh, Praline. I really want to start um, my, uh, the turtle uh, that was designed for Lauren's uh, 
Josh. Right, right, right. Uh, the Susan, is this Susan, no, Susan Claudino? Yeah, I think it was Susan Claudino Turtle. I think it's Susan Claudino. It was really cute, and I've been wanting to start that, so I'll probably start that one. And we don't care on our side how many other groups no. you double dip in. If you're doing something for... Because I think that the uh, Stock and Ed zombies, zombies are doing a, um, a softy something or other. I, I don't know if this is only knitted or not. I need to shoot them an email and see if I can enter my softies in theirs. But I know there's a couple of people who are doing toy type things in October. Um, so I don't care. Ty doesn't care how many. You um, care terribly. How many you enter into as long you as you can add, enter ours. twenty into if you're really yeah out. as long as it's okay with them. Yes. We don't care. You can enter ours and however many you want. That's fine. Um, so please uh, be thinking about what you'd like to make for the toy along. The more toys, the better. We love it. And the prices will be to be determined. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, don't get to write down when we um, mention people. Stocking at zombies. I don't mm -hmm. have a pen. Oh, why don't you have a pen? Not in fact. Actually, I need to get a pen out too. Maybe I have one in here. Um, blah, 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 blah. We are a little more animated today. Um, Stocking at zombies? Indeed. Um, where's my... Do I have a notebook out? That is the question. I do not know. Oh, there's my notebook. Because I need my notebook. Um, Stock and zombies. All right. Are you? Well, having? I don't get. To, I don't start because I only have two. You only have two whips. Yeah. Books. Okay. Do we have anything else in the order? Yeah, just. I think that's all we have for. We're still getting used to this new setup. Yeah, we'll we'll be a little rusty for the next couple of weeks, especially since we're so busy with other things. But we'll we'll get together probably by the new year. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, hooks, whips. Um, I have four. The first one I worked on was Davina's Sedna Shawl, The Colorful Dream. And it is in Did My Knitting's My Bag. The impossible dream. My Knitting's My Bag. Sock bag. Faith, hope, and love bag. Do not poke my bags. Keep your pointy sticks to yourself. No. I think it's in the milk bag. Stop it. <coughs> anyway, I made quite a bit of progress on this. And you might hear Davina playing piano in the background. Yeah, she has to practice, so she's practicing in the background. Um, I made quite a bit of progress on this. I still have to change chords. I just haven't gotten around to it. I really want to because it frustrates me when it gets all bunched up and I can't count the stitches. But anyway... So here's the red little doohickey. Can you see it? I can't see it. Oh, there's a red little doohickey. Right there. Okay. So you can see that I made quite a bit of progress on here. Let me turn it around so you can see it. So you can see the right side instead of the wrong side. There you go. Um, not the orange. That's the mark of the spine. But uh, where is it? It is... Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm still directionally challenged, but anyway, so you can see the red little doohickey. Mm -hmm. That is right there. Right there. Yeah. So I guess about maybe an inch and a half. I did several rows. I was kind of happy about that. I kept messing up on my count. I couldn't figure out why because I recounted. I think because it's so tight on the on the cord, I was having trouble counting it. So Taya told me how to make one right or left or whatever it was, and then. I went and counted, and I had too many on both sides. So then I went ahead <laughs> and knit two together, and I'm okay now. So I don't think it did any harm to the to the shawl. Irrevocable. This Irre shawl, Irre irrevocable, irrevocable damages. Irrevocable. This shawl goes on forever. I mean, I love it. It is a shawl that <laughs> never. I love it because it's not. And it goes um, on and on, my friend. Meow. Meow. Anyway. Um, no cat fights. This, um, I went and I noticed that I, I'm about halfway through it. I thought I was further along, but I'm not. <laughs> so it's a good thing I have another ball of yarn. But, and this is why I have never completed the Sedna Shawl. Well, it's, I, I'm not complaining about it in terms of the amount. I mean, I like it because it's teaching me a lot about knitting, and it's also fairly mindless. Um, and that's just all knit or all pearl. So until I get to the crochet, it's just I have to keep an eye on the count. Because sometimes, every once in a while, I'll pick up something that I shouldn't have. Um, and this is on U.S. Six Needles 
and I think it's a 32 inch cord which will probably move up to a 40 when I get the chance and I'm using the Plymouth um, Plymouth what is this? I forgot to put the Plymouth yarn in there but it's it's uh, Nemours colorway that's what it is and the um, the uh, border will be no makers skein dippers in orange and the shawl is a set in a shawl by Marilyn Lynx okay um, <clears throat> Do you want to go or keep going? Okay, I'm only going to go one more though. The next thing that I am working on is something um, with a whim. I was watching um, Wolf Farms and Dawn, and she was talking about Fuji and everything. And I haven't bought a button or anything. I haven't bought anything like that. I'm not real fond of the colorway. I like more blues and stuff than the greens. So I felt kind of bad that I wasn't doing anything. So I looked around. And I found a pattern. I'm calling him Cosmo the Chihuahua. He's Lupita the Chihuahua. It's a pattern by Paola Navarro. I really like her stuff. She's got some really cute things. This is this is the pattern. Sorry for all the pinpoints. I know you know. secrets out. There we go. That's what I'm making. And I thought, I think it's adorable. I mean, I, I thought, oh, this is perfect. I wanted to make it to kind of, you know, tell Dawn I'm thinking about her and James and Fuji. Which means that now we have to mention them in show notes. Oh, yes. Well, in a minute. And I'm in the middle of cabling, so we'll have to wait. <laughs> it's... This is how far I've gotten. This is the head and the snout. It's a lot bigger than I thought. Now, granted, the pattern calls for a DK. He stuck a hook in his head. <laughs> it's, it calls for a DK yarn, and I'm using um, worsted because worsted, I have all these scraps. Well, actually, it's not even worsted. It's Aaron weight. Well, it's, it's Red Hearts or whatever. Red Hearts are basically Aaron weight. So that's the head I'm working on. You can see the nose and everything. And... Um, it's moving along pretty fast. I had to put it aside for a little while um, while I did other things. But I did this in like a, like a couple hours. I mean, it was really a fast, fast crochet. And I'm using an F-hook. An F-hook with red heart yarn. This is tan. Um, I think I'm also going to be using brown, black, and white. And it's mostly scrap yarns, mostly red heart. Did you decide what color the sweater was going to be? No, I haven't decided on the color of the sweater. I'm thinking maybe a teal. I wonder if that'll be enough to put me in teal, <laughs> teal timber. Um, probably not, because it's not that big of a part of it. But maybe a teal. The sweater is pink, but I don't want a pink sweater. I don't like pink. Sorry, Denise. <laughs> um, we have to be to more than Denise. Like half the podcast. Denise and world seems to be Kathy, pink and I just don't people. care for pink. I, if I'm gonna use pink, I like it to be like this, really bright. Um, or rose, or rose, dusty rose, dusty rose, dusty rose. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a like a Pepto Bismol pink kind of person. Or this kind of a or pink. Barbie pink, no, or that really no. light pink. I'm not a fan of this kind of pink up here. No. It's okay, but um. So anyway, that's my Chihuahua. It's living in my Cloverbird teapot bag, the real teapot here, teapot bag, and. I'm having fun with that. I hope to get some more work done on that soon. It may end up as part of the toy along because I have other things that I want to get done first. Um, I said what the yarn was. I said what the needle, the hook was. So it's your turn. Okay. Um, I guess I should. I forgot about the spinning. Um, so also you have to do two of them. No. Right? No, I'll do one, then you do one, then I'll do one, then I'll. Because then we have we each have three. Okay. Yeah. I forgot about the spinning completely though. Um, I didn't do a whole lot in the way of spinning. Um, but I did a little bit after the podcast last week. Um, it keeps trying to get on. Um, I'm using the No Makers Hank McCoy. Um colorway for my which I think is pretty it's even prettier than um than the other one you got dark me. green duck no not dark green the other blue one you got me um 
with a purple in it. Um, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah, I wish this was available in a pre-made yarn, but Me it's too. not. The only way you can get Hank McCoy is as um, it's only even spin, right? As fiber. So it's not a whole lot of difference from what you saw last week, but it did a little bit of spinning on it. Um, so yeah. I had a headache earlier in the week, and this was very um, soothing for headache. Nice and relaxing. Yeah, because you don't, you really, you don't have to follow a pattern. You just sit there and you spin. It's hypnotic. Yes. You are getting sleepy. Sleepy. Don't pick. Well, I want, sometimes my um, yarn folds in on itself a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's very thin. Mm -hmm. It is. So, I was thinking I might invest in a, uh, spindle at the uh, Senegal Fiber Festival. I hope I get to try a spinning wheel. I don't know. That they should have one. Um, they should have one. Because they were talking about, um, if you if you get on the thread, they were talking about how one of them had, a, had their, the lady who's doing the podcast or meetup mm -hmm. and stuff, how they had hers hijacked or something for rental or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember exactly what it said. but And that might have been for the more classes. Right. Um, but... It, I'm not taking a spinning class, but I kind of would like to get to play with a spinning wheel. Well, talk to somebody. I mean, she's going to be probably at the meetup. Maybe she'll, yeah. let you, maybe she'll let you do a little bit. Yeah. Because I'd like to get the uh, feel for it. I'd I think I'd like to treadle. Um, I would like that. I think it would be easier on my shoulders, but I don't have the time to do it. I, yeah. I want to really concentrate on the actual creating of garments and toys and mm -hmm. such things. And I talked to one of my coworkers uh, who spins and knits into going to this fire festival, and she's taking a spinning class, and she's super excited about it. But your turn. My turn. Okay. Um, my next one is my Lady Blue. Oh, look at that. Okay. Um, my Lady Blue uh, sweater from the Eyelet Yoke Cardigan Pattern by Linda Perman, and I did contact her. She's such a sweet, such a sweet uh, person, asking her... <laughs> about the sleeves, and she said, yeah, I, I had read it right, that's the way it's supposed to be, and actually, after I talked to her, I felt a lot better about it, and it seems to be, knock on wood, working a lot, a lot better, I just have to be very careful about where I'm turning so I get my counts properly, but I like the way it's turning out, it's, it's just a little bit fiddly in the sleeves, and that's okay, I can deal with that. My sweater has been moved, I don't think I, had I already moved it into my turtle bag? I don't remember. In my lowest great big You haven't moment. worked on it in a couple of weeks. My great big, no, just one week. Really? Okay. I guess it was two weeks. Just my great big humongous turtle bag. The turtles Lois. are very cute. I love this bag. It's huge. I absolutely love it. And I think this is the one that Lois calls now the sweater bag as opposed to her tween one, which is about an inch and a half or two shorter, but the same width. Kind of like, um, I don't have, look. Which one you have? Lots of medium. I thought I had another Lois large, but I don't. The other one's Cloverbird. So anyway, I didn't do a whole lot of work on this until a couple of days ago when I had heard from her, when I heard, not from Lois, but from um, Linda. And I got about four rows done on the sleeve. So it might not look like there's a lot of difference, but I did do a lot uh, on the sleeve, this sleeve here. You can see it's a little bit lower than it was. I think it was probably about here. And it's been a while since I've seen it, so I might not remember yeah. where it was at before. And I really, I still really like this pattern. Um, she, I was looking at, and if all her patterns are written the way this one is written, and as easy to follow, and she's very accessible, I will definitely be doing more of her patterns. They're just very nice to follow. They, they flow nicely. And she is accessible if you have questions. Uh, this is, I'm using, I'm using a little bit of a different, um, I'm kind of tangled up here, sorry. Um, I'm using, let's see, what am I using? An F hook and the Nip, uh, Nipix Brava Sport Yarn instead of the, instead of the uh, Brava Worsted that I was going to use because I couldn't get gauge with the Brava Worsted and I think it was the H or I hook or whatever it was that they had originally called for, I couldn't get gauge. I had to go down to an F and drop to a sport weight which is one of the reasons why I'm kind of afraid to buy sweat, um, sweater worth. Uh, Not sweater. to mention, sweater is worth is so much more expensive for crochet because they double the amount of yarn. Right, and if I'm doing it in the, um, what's going on here? Um, 
if I'm doing it in the um, there it is. Okay. If I'm doing it in a in a sock weight yarn, I don't know if I can get gauge, and I worry about you know not being able to. Uh, I might be able to get some of that yarn off your hands. Uh, sure. <sighs> All right, Lois, what am I doing here? Oh, I see. It might help you actually grab the things that you're yeah. supposed to grab. Well, I was trying to grab both of them. This uh -huh. is a great bag. So that's what I'm, my, in my turtle bag, I love this. I got this when Lauren was doing her Josh, um, heliocytosis. Heli heli I, I couldn't get one of the Josh bags. And Lois came out with this one, and I just loved it. I had to have it. And I think it just happened to be at the same time. It, happened, it wasn't no, like, yeah, 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 it wasn't that. I just had to have this bag. I mean, I absolutely love it. Even if it hadn't been Josh's, you know, mid-along whatever thing, I wanted this. I, it was just perfect. Anyway, so that's my sweater in my turtle bag from Lois. Your turn. Yeah, let me just cross this off. Okay. Oh, who was I supposed to write? Uh, Wolf Farms? Wolf Farms, and was there somebody else? I think it was just Wolf Farms. Okay. Well, speaking of turtles, in my turtle bag, <laughs> um, by Cloverbird, I call this my spike bag, because it makes me think of Spike from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Um, but is my Potiversary sweater. Speaking of Potiversary, I'm wearing my Potiversary colorway uh, hey. for the Zuzu's petals. This is a lot of times my nighttime wearing, because I stay up all night like a vampire. Um, and. Because you're so. Although, I guess I could say I actually stay up all night like Batman, because. Like, did you, you see, did, did you see the thing that my coworker posted on Facebook? Like, I'm not saying that I'm Batman. I'm just saying that Batman and I have never been seen in the same room at the same time. <laughs> Like, I have, like, five different people from work going, like, like, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, anyway. Um, so, I live a flipped schedule to everyone else. It'll be different on uh, my vacation. I'll actually live like a normal person. But this is very nice for when uh, I get a little chilly at night. It gives me a little bit of warmth around my neck. Sometimes I'll wear a sweater. Sometimes I get really into TVs and stuff when I'm writing them, so when there's exciting stuff going on, I'll get hot, but my neck will still be cold, so I can take off whatever sweater I'm wearing and still be comfortable with my Zeus's petals. So, Zeus's petals. It's been getting a lot more use than I anticipated. It makes me think, especially if I had, like, a jacket over or something, it makes me think almost like um, a Western bandana-ish kind of look. It's a little too big for that. She has Clint Eastwood on the brain. Yeah. But just during that one time period. And favor. Yeah. Favor, that man, favor. yeah. Yeah, that man had, to, had an awesome speaking voice. Yeah, yeah really well, so deep. Did, so did the guy in Virginia last night. Yes, but not nearly as oh, deep. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's got a deep voice. Mm -hmm. Some people just have that radio voice. And Eric Fleming was the one who did um, Gil Favor. I don't know the name of the guy who played in the Virginia last night. I forget what it was. But... When they talk, it's sort of like it's this rumbling kind of, no but it's not like the. It's there's so, a resonance. There's a resonance. They have presence just in their voice. Think of um, James Earl Jones or something. Yeah, yeah. It's just like you, when they talk, it's like, I could listen to you all mm -hmm. day. <laughs> just speak some more, please. <laughs> say, just speak. Um, but I like um, listening to him talk anyway because he could just. He says. He can he puts more authority in just a slight raising of his tone than someone can get with shouting at someone. Um, it's very much a I think of like a, a parent's way of handling things. You know, he'll be like he says now and just slightly raises his voice and it's like he has the effect of him like barking at someone. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, awesome voice. You are Sorry, Jack. She's blathering. Well, I blather, blather, yes. blather, blather, blather. Anniversary sweater. Blather. Blather yourself. Blather. Blather, blather. Um, I think I'm using U.S. 2s. I think that's what I said. Uh, actually, it might be U.S. 3s. Let me see. U.S. 3s. Um, and this is my Potiversary Koei yarn. Um, the, the yarn was uh, dyed by Kimberly R. 
of KR Dye Works. Fabulous yes, design. very awesome. It's the same. Great, great, great dye. Same dyeing as this. Um, which is what got us off. I was like, how did we get on rawhide? Oh, mom did it. What? I was wondering how we got on rawhide. I, uh, and I was like, oh, mom did it because we were talking about Zeus's petals. Well, you brought rawhide in. No, you did. I said I, Clint Eastwood. Well, <laughs> the dad. Clint Eastwood is in Dirty Harry and rawhide. Yeah, but I didn't. Uh, blah, 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 I don't blah, watch blah, Dirty blah, Harry blah, and blah. blah. Meow. Keep your hissy fit to yourself, you little Because the only other things I've watched of him is I've watched uh, um, Good, Bad, and the Ugly, mm -hmm. and I've watched, uh, oh, it's the one with um, Quinn Asper, Mom. What? The one with Quinn Asper. Um, Gunsmoke. No, the one where they're together. Oh, um, um, City, City Heat. Heat. City Heat. Shorty. Shorty, yes. <laughs> well, he's not shorty. No, he's uh, the one who you spill, the lieutenant. You spill his coffee okay, and his eyebrows. And his eyebrows starts off. twitching. <laughs> and then a fight ensues. Uh, City Heat. City Heat. It was disappointing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so sidetrack. This is the Potiversary sweater so far. I'm like several rows away from having to separate from for the sleeves. I think I was several rows away last week too, but I did get a couple rows done. You can sign it there. You can kind of see where the color changes are taking place. Yep, yep, yep. Very good. The light's a little dark in here. I'm not sure why, but there we go. You can see a little bit of... It's a very slight color change anyway, so... The purple starting to change a different purple about he, here. It's very subtle, though. And it's not showing up nearly as well as it could be. It's just being obnoxious right now. Well, it's not quite 3 o'clock. Well, yeah, it's after 3 o'clock. Maybe the sun's already out of its... But, um, yeah, it, it had some progress made, but this was not the main thing I was working on this week. Optimal for, that's what I was looking for, optimal, as an Optimus Prime. I feel like I should recognize where that comes from. Transformers. Oh, I've never watched Transformers. I would sit with Davina when she was a baby. We were in Belgium, and my husband had gotten stationed remote to Florent, Belgium. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's no reason for you not to be here. So he pulled us over, and the girls were... Two and a half and less than a year. And Davina, my older one, not this one, would. Um, I, Ty my name is not Davina? Ty would be asleep in a crib upstairs. I had to take Davina downstairs because Davina would talk and keep Ty up. So I, I'd lay her on my stomach and she'd go to sleep that way. And I'd have to watch whatever. <laughs> I'd end up watching Transformers or whatever, DJ Cat, all this kind of stuff. Because <laughs> so, I couldn't move from the couch because Davina was sleeping on my chest. But anyway. Um, probably more than you really wanted to know. Um, my next, are you done with that other project? Yeah, go Stop ahead. poking me or I'll be forced to hurt you. Tee hee. Um, oh, what I'm working on. What I'm working on now is living in two bags, actually, because I have the yarn in two different bags. In my knitting's my bag, gnome bag, and I don't know why they call this the lazy gnome, because to me they're all... Is there a lazy gnome at all there's on there? There's one, I think. Sleepy. There he is. And it's in my Bright Crafters tea and cake and candy tea time bag. And what happened was um, I actually per, um, put into deep hibernation a project, I'll tell you about that later, um, and decided to reclaim the yarn. And so this is the um, Yarn from the English garden. And deep hibernation is just a way of saying she frogged it. No, I did not frog it. I intend to redo it, and that will come up with the hibernation later. But this is the, I, I did, I like this better. I'm actually free. No! Free, um, Violence! I'm cute. Free. <laughs> Ow! This is a free. Don't start fighting with someone using DPN. A yeah, free. Yeah. <laughs> A free, um, it's not a free write, it's a free um, free form pattern. It's out of my head and I'm working it as I go. I don't know what it's going to look like. Out of your head? Yes, I know, out of your head. Because you're out of your head. You're out of your head. So right now, I, right now this is just, yes, you are. Put on your glasses. What's the name of that song? I don't know. This is mostly right now double crochet and single crochet. I'm doing a little bit in the back loops right now as well. And I guess I'll find out what it looks like when I find out, because I really haven't got a clue at this point. And it's 
basically because I'm getting tired of having this yarn in my stash. I, I like the yarn, but it doesn't seem to work well with patterns, so I decided something more plain might work better with And then she has the same line list to work on for, like, yeah, TV and possibly the ride to Ohio. Right, and things like that. So that's basically what I'm doing with this, something I don't have to think about too much. And I'm using the uh, Yarn B yarn, the Danielle yarn in the Dawn colorway. That makes me laugh. Yeah, it makes me laugh too because it's two podcasters. <laughs> and and this, um, it's funny because the other yarn B, the one that I used for my, uh, that I'm using for my um, Zarina shawl, is also yarn B, but it's a different um, base and it's more splitty. This is not as splitty. I like this. Um, this Danielle base is, is nice. So that's basically what I'm doing. This is my last whip at this particular pine. 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 Mm. Point in time. Yeah. Because I'm a pine tree. Moing, moing, moing. Hot tea. Moing, 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 moing. Okay. All right. So the project I've been working on most of the, any time I've been at home or at a point where I'm sitting for any period of time, is the project I call Legless. It's a Vivian pattern by Osalda Teague. Um, I'm doing size 36 using US 9 Knit Picks Interchangeable Circulars um, and Stonehenge Fiber Mills Shepherd's Wool in a Blue Spruce Colorway. Um, first of all, I ha found out that I have like a skein and a half left. A little less than a skein and a half. And <clears throat> I did a little freak out because I was like, well, I could possibly have enough for the whole sweater, but I could also possibly not have enough for the whole sweater. You have to pull a Megan. So, rather than pulling a Megan, um, <coughs> is that anything like pulling a Lindsay? No. No. Um, I think pulling a Megan freaks me out more than pulling a Lindsay. Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> now I have to put a Megan and Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Um, but she's just run it, right? Yeah, she's just run it. Mm -hmm. Um, meh, I don't have the brain power for you to distract me. Meh. Meh. How is that different from any other time? Uh, run. Knit. Yes. Anyway, um, I was saying something. You didn't do it. <laughs> I was saying something. Uh, oh yeah, so I ordered more of the yarn in the Blue Spruce colorway. Um, and it was like Ruby something or other was the site. I got it off of Ravelry. Ruby 9. Yeah, and I, I like the fact because they ask you, do you want the ball? It already, you know, rolled up for you. Yeah, they kick it up for you, They right? kick it up yeah. for you. They give you the option to get it up for you. They do PayPal. The color quality seems to be really good. Like, in terms of the picture. Of in it. the picture on the screen. So if they come, I did three days shipping because I really want my yarn quickly. Um, but if they come through, I will probably be looking at them for picking up yarns like the Shepherd's Wool in the future. I went and looked at the site. It looks very professional. It looks like good quality. I mean, they have Shepherd's Wool. They have Plymouth, I think. They mm -hmm. have a few other. And I've always, I've been very happy with Shepherd's Wool. Uh, so I like Shepherd's Wool. I've used it once. I've so used it for the whole Lohan. I've been using it for this pattern. And I've started another project in Shepherd's Wool that I have in a sweater's amount. But it was more that I didn't feel like working that project, so I tore, out, tore it out and reclaimed the yarn. But, uh, yes, did I mention using U.S. 9? I think I did. Uh, progress. Let me move things around in here. This is the half skein that I have left. Um, move that up to the side. The body is done for right now. It's kind of on hold per the pattern. Boing. We make sure I'm facing the right way this time. Yeah. Every time I watch that makes me laugh. So, the main yeah. part of the body is done. Each stitch feels funny. And it's and seat stitch tends to be stretchy, so that's good. Although this I don't think this will have any problem being the right size. I'm just hoping it won't be too big. Um because I might weep if it's too big. But it's Very working up very nicely. That's the main part of the body. Which is, like, this is, I started this, 
I think we said it was 2012, April 2000. That's what you said, yeah. Because it was just a little bit earlier than It my, was two months before your <coughs> my other one. So this is started in April 2012. This has been on the needles for a while. I started this as a fairly new knitter. I'd only been knitting since Christmas um, of the year before, 2011. So um, I started this as a brand new knitter because I was like, I like this pattern. And it was a very... Um, um, not foolhardy, very uh, ambitious enterprise. Impetuous. Ambitious enterprise. I wasn't impetuous because if it was impetuous, it, it, it would have died off as soon as possibly. Possibly. But ambitious works too. Yeah, it was a very ambitious enterprise. Mm -hmm. That's the main part of the body. What was not started last week and has gotten a lot of work on it is the left sleeve. Very pretty. So, as you can see, the left sleeve has gotten a lot of work on it. She's working on a, sh a shedded snake scale thing. And there's the cable. <coughs> now, right here, the chart, at this part of the sweater, the chart, I don't feel was written correctly. You said it wasn't very clear. It was, well, the, the, it didn't match anything in the yeah. key. The, she showed me the, the symbols, and the symbols weren't. It wasn't, on it, wasn't, the key it wasn't on the key at all. So I just made up what it was going to be, and I'll just make it get up through the same thing on the right side, and it'll be fine. Um, I didn't feel like contacting the designer <laughs> and waiting. I wanted to get continue on with my sweater. So there it mm. is. I am probably mm, 10, 20 rows, but it goes really quickly. Oh, not even that many rows. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I'm five rows from the end of the sleeve. Um, so actually... I might be able to use most of this for the Maybe. next sleeve. But then you've got the, the hood and everything. It's going to yeah. take a lot of yarn. So you yeah. might need the at least part of the second one. Yeah. Um, New acquisition. Yes. <coughs> but that one's not, the yarn's mm -hmm. not here yet. No. Mm -hmm. um, so, very, uh, I've got a gunk in my throat. Mm -hmm. um, very happy with... Uh, the way this has been turning out. The seat stitch is going to make it stretch. It's going to be a nice long sleeve for my orangutan arms. Um, so I'm hoping, they, the complaints with the sweater that some people post is like, oh, the sleeves are too long. So I was like, yes, that's perfect. Cause I'd rather have to push the sleeves up than have them. Because I, I have really long arms. Um, and this will be very happy for me. I mean, like, look at that. Even when I pull up as high as it can possibly go, like, I doubt it'll go up that high. And it still hits my low, my high comfort level. More likely it's going to come down a little lower on me, which makes me thrilled. And it's, I like actually tighter sleeves, so this will be keeping me nice and warm. And it'll stretch because it's seed stitch. So you can see my hand in here. So... Um, very happy with this. I'll probably finish this sleeve tonight and start the second one. So, um, then after I finish the second sleeve, because I did this in a week. Um, plus the body. <clears throat> plus the body. So, I'm hoping, my goal, I would love to finish this second sleeve and then get the body finished and start the hood. I would love to have that done before I leave for retreat. Because then I have a green sweater as well as a red sweater. You see, I want to finish my blue one. We'll see. Uh, <clears throat> but if I don't, I want this at least done for my cable class. Mm. Which is egotistical and horrible. I want to walk into she my... She wants to pull an Amy. I want to walk into my cable class and be like, yeah, there's my Vivian. I'm, yep, I'm going to learn about cables and designing cables and this cable and that cable. And I'm going to be wearing my complicated Vivian cable sweater. Because she's all that. Or I think she is. <sighs> uh, hey, I'm proud of this. You should be. Um, and it's slightly egotistical. I'm either going to wear this or my... Slightly? It's, I'm either going to wear this, my really complicated cable pattern, or wear my um, antler with a little like cable. The across. I do love my I like antler. antler. Um, and I wear my antler all the time. It's actually sitting here behind me. Um, I, that's, I wear it every day, except when I go to work. I'm always wearing some sort of hand knit. Or hand crochets. At work, I have my big, bulky, crocheted sweater. At home, I wear my red one. And Zuzu's petals have been getting a lot of use lately. 
I can't wait till it gets a little bit colder and I can wear whole aloha. Mm -hmm. But, yep, now that I've chatted on for 20 years, you're true. I, mean, I don't have any more. Um, don't you have FO? Yeah, I do have an FO. I, my FO is um, currently living, and for now, it's going to cease to live in here after I show it to you. <laughs> I finished my Zarina shawl, my um, my scrap shawl pattern by Anastasia Knits. That's Anastasia Zatel. I'm the Anastasia Knits design group. I had this much blue left. And I think I had actually less. Well, no, the silver. I the silver. And I, I love the color. I think it's turning. It turned out beautifully. And I think that looks very nice with whatever you wear. I'm glad you did the second blue. Yeah, I am too. It's a huge shawl. Meow. The blue is actually very similar to the blue. It is. Yours is a little darker. Uh, in terms of deepness. Yes. So, this is how it turned out. Um, I see it's fairly long in the back. Can I see it? Yes, it can. Okay. Um, it's very warm. I think I'll probably be wearing this a lot. I probably will take it with me on retreat. It can go, you know, it can... Oh, that's for my yarn. Hmm? Oh, no, I was just talking to myself. I forgot that I took my yarn out of the bag. I have something like, I think I have another one of these blue ones left, a full skein, another one of the, um, this gray blue, a full skein, and then I have all that silver that I pulled out plus a full skein left. So I didn't know what kind of pattern I would be doing. Um, this was fun. I enjoyed it immensely and would do it again. I'd like to try it maybe in a um, a lighter weight yarn, maybe a sock weight yarn, in a tonal, not even change, just have it change have on it, its own. Have it change on its own. Well, something like our Potiversary yarn would be really pretty. Oh yeah, it would have been. And I might, I could do it on that, but I don't want to do another shawl mm -hmm. with my pot, with the Potiversary yarn. So, right, so you already have one. Right, I might do a cowl or something with that. So this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it immensely. I have to take pictures of it so I can put it in different places. Um, it it was a very, very fast crochet. It was not at all um, difficult. You just had to pay attention at the beginning. So you knew you know, at the beginning of the um, edging. And that was fine. It was absolutely fine. And you can use however many colors. That's, that's the fun thing about it. This could be a great stash buster. And it is, like I said, it is currently living in my Cloverbird chai tea bag. And I... And it, even though it's really a coffee bag. It is a tea bag. It's coffee. Tea bag. Coffee. With tea bag with cocoa beans. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. For the chocolate chai. So that's my F.O. I'm really happy about that. It is finished. I hope to have more. Safe Safe and It is safe and but that's all I have for our boats. Okay. <coughs> Writer's block for things put in hibernation. I believe you said you had something put in hibernation. I do have something in hibernation. <coughs> Excuse me. My English garden uh, blanket, which is from the Anastasia Knits Flower Pot Afghan. I put it in what I call deep hibernation. Somebody had this really, really neat avatar. It said, frog, but we'll try again. And to me, that's why I'm calling my deep hibernation as opposed to being completely frog because she's she's in an aisle she I like frogging things. I like the yarn. She 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 has like this terror of how, of frogging. I have things. a good I have several things frog. But she will she she hates frogging. Things. I don't like to frog things. But it's really fun. I like I like the pattern and I like the yarn. I do not like the pattern with the yarn and I thought that this yarn was too busy. Stinks is gonna come over and smack you. <laughs> Um, the pattern is was overwhelmed, I think, by the yarn. You couldn't really see the pattern. So rather than continue with a pattern that I didn't think was working with the yarn, I put it in deep hibernation until I can find a proper yarn for it. And um, we'll pick it up when I find that yarn. This 
yarn is reclaimed for my as of now unnamed blanket pattern. Um, the blanket with no name? The blanket that has no name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't get why he's called the man with no name because he's called Blondie. Yeah. I'll call this my Blondie blanket. <laughs> the colors are... No, he wouldn't wear that. Well, the, he wouldn't wear that, but the, he's blonde. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's not his colors. No. So that is my one writer's block. Okay. Prompts? Um, prompts? Mm, I haven't really been thinking about anything I want to work besides the uh, Susan Claudino turtle. Right. And I won't start that until next month. And I'm hoping they'll have this done long before that. Yeah, my hooks and needles, besides things that are um, currently already there, that you already know about, you've seen all the stuff I'm working on, um, I do want to start, the only one I can think of offhand that I want to start is the um, Cliff the Brontosaurus mm -hmm. Amagumi Pattern by Stacy Trock. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of monogamous lately. I have just now, three weeks one day, I think I was mm -hmm. monogamous. And... <laughs> Monogamous. That's my ringtone on my husband's phone. Monogamous? <laughs> Monogamous. Um, but, um, what was I saying? Uh, up until, for about three oh, weeks, right. ago, you were monogamous. For about, for about, did you, did you? Yeah, for about well, three weeks, I was monogamous, or fairly monogamous. This week, as you can tell, I had one, two, three, four projects plus the one I finished. So I was working on five things this week. I've been wanting to finish things that have been mm -hmm. whipped for a long time. That's what I want to do. I want to finish my sweater now that I... The problem is, and it remains for me, is finding a room with light that is proper so I can work on it and where I'm not distracted. Well, if you get to the point where you're comfortable with the idea of knitting sweaters, that takes care of that problem. Because really, this is dark yarn, mm -hmm. but because it's up against a needle, the only issue that you might have is if you decide you don't like working with DPNs. Right. But you can do the math to spread the stitches among the two stitches and just mark where it or would I can be. Use, or I can use two sets of DPNs. Like well, still, even though that would still wouldn't cover the issue of what the, like for a pattern like this, for example, and this can count as their teaching, which I said, uh, they tell you put A, B, C number of stitches. I think it was like initially put nine stitches on first needle, put whatever number of stitches on second needle, put nine stitches on third needle. And the idea is you do the seed stitch on the first and the second needle, and you can tell when you look at it, so it's not giving anything away. And you did your cable pattern that'll be along the front of the sleeve on the middle needle. If you were doing this instead, it'd be a little harder to do that. Because I know Kathy does this all the time on on. I think it's Kathy Mittner. You can do it. Um, and, and Daniela, I think, also does it. Yeah, um, the way you would do it, I think, is I that think you would, um, when, I, when I used to magic loop my sleeves instead of do DPNs, I figured this was just easier this way. I didn't have to worry about the math or whatever. But you would mark where the separations would be for the sleeves. Mm -hmm. And you just had to make sure that maybe one... Uh, you don't want to spread, like, because the cable is in the middle mm -hmm. of the, um, of, is in the middle needle, you don't want to split this, right, these stitches. If you're going to split stitches, split these. Right, between the seed stitches. Yeah. Um, you just have to figure out a way to keep these on the same needle. Mm -hmm. And then just mark with stitch markers, this is where the first needle will begin, this is where the second needle will begin. Does that make any sense? Yeah, and I, and I will probably learn how to do that when I, I have, um. And DPNs really Susan, are fiddly, as fiddly as you think. Who does the uh, not-so-tiny giraffe? That's Susan Anderson? That's Susan Anderson, yeah. Um, when I take her class, I know that she's she's got DPNs. And what I would suggest, and this is something I've just found, just because I tend to wear... I I wear hand knits, hand crochets when I'm knitting a lot. Yeah. The knit, hand knits don't usually tend to be as much of an issue. They aren't as bulky. There's not as big holes for the needles to get caught crochets. in. My big crocheted sweater, <clears throat> I have to roll up the sleeves. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, this long DPN gets caught in. Well, I stitches. find that I find that even if I'm crocheting, like the sweater you made me, uh -huh. if you if I am working that, I will catch the the loop on the on the open work of the crochet. But to go back to what made it start a tangent, you might find that that's a little easier to see because the stitches mm -hmm. pop up against the needle. Right. Um, especially if you're working a metal needle versus right. a uh, wooden. But um, thus ended the lesson. Yes. I wish to, to uh, finish my sweater, hopefully, by the retreat, or at least by the Fiber Festival. We'll see. I'm but hoping it'll be a little chilly at the Fiber Festival. I'm and hoping it'll be a little chilly at the retreat. 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 Yes. 
I'm going to like pack all these hand mitts. And I'm going to have such a big suitcase. We have to be careful because my husband's truck has a um, one of those roll top on the bed of the back of the truck. And if you have something that's too high, it will and, and, and or too deep because of the place that it rolls back into kind of like a little receptacle. You can't put as much as maybe you want to. So I'm getting a long bed truck next time. <laughs> He keeps trying to get me to uh, take his truck. Oh, he tries to get me to get it, too, and I don't want it. I don't. No, I, I, and I like my little Honda. Well, hopefully we get a little bigger car when we get a car, though. Yeah. New car, just a little bigger one. I like my Honda. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's exactly how Daddy got in his accident. Dad's car is also a lot smaller than mine. Yes. Um, Actually, that's not how we got in the accident. But, no. But, uh, anyway. But that is our... Um, our next on the hooks and needles. A lot of our next on the hooks and needles will be um, regarding the pot, the pot nursery, regarding the toys meow. for tots. Meow. So. Meow. Meow. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know what that was about. We kind of did didactic already with mm-hmm. the tips of the uh, DPNs. Uh, royalties. I don't really have any, I don't any, have any royalties. No, no enabling. Autobiography. I worked a little bit on shared story. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been hard. Characters haven't even wanted to talk to me. Yeah, we have a couple of really perspective characters. Both hers. Go figure. Um, um, but it also is a hard section. It is because one of my characters has just arrived. Um, and then other part of autobiography still fairly. When I whenever I start a new TV show, I watch it almost obsessively because that's how I, I get entrenched in characters. And this is the whole reason why I can't do role playing because I would never. Yeah, I would never get out. <laughs> that's the way I am too. I could. I um, couldn't. I that. get very much entrenched in the characters. Um, that's always what made writing fan fiction easy for me. I was always told that I got the mm-hmm. the voice of the character spot on because I would really get in their heads. Um, so I'm kind of like that for Rawhide right now. I'm really entrenched in it. Uh, I have a tendency, like even if I've just watched an episode, and this is with anything I watch, I I will watch things again to catch minute details like facial expressions mm-hmm. and. I would sit there imagining what they were react. Basically, I'm rewriting the story, not rewriting what happened. No, you write, you write other life. I, I used to do that all the time. I still do that. Um, I'm rewriting. I'm adding a new layer to it in my head. Oh, well, what are they feeling when they're when this is going on, based on their expression? Oh, I'm, I'm imagining each little. And each time I watch it, I feel I fill in a new detail. And that's any time I watch a TV show. Um, not with this particular one. So that's what I'm doing with this right now. It probably hasn't, to some extent, been the most helpful for my writing. Um, but, um, yeah, that's kind of been what I've been doing right now, obsessions-wise. Um, my we have really bad obsessive tendencies in this we family. We do. We have to be very careful. I have to go back to polishing my synopsis. I do not make the cut for the contest so I am going to have to see if I can submit it to Tor and then if that doesn't go through I'll probably try self-publishing the book um, to see um, if people like it. I've been told it's a good story so I've, and I've also been told it's very hard to break in so I'm going to keep trying. It's a little frustrating but... Remember it took Stephen King a yeah, long time too. Yeah it did. But I do not want to pay somebody to well, didn't people Rowling is was self published to begin with? A lot of a lot of people were self published, and I mean her stuff just took off. I don't know. If the, I think the girl from Twilight might have been. I don't know, and I don't. I just want people to read my stuff yeah. to like it. I don't care if it goes. But the you know, point is, you know, I think self publishing has become kind of the way to break it, in. It is people a lot. Of, I know a few authors, and that's the way they broke in. So hopefully, hopefully Tor will like my stuff. But if it doesn't. Uh, if Tor doesn't like it for whatever reason, then I'll, you know, if they do because you're not a name or whatever. Whatever reason, or there's too many, I will just publish it myself through Amazon or Ex, Ex Libris or something like that. And I'll let everybody know um, if that happens and when that happens. So if you do want to see what I'm writing, you can. Um, I did a little bit of writing to my five. I've been in a little bit of a funk after that. I was kind of discouraged for a couple of days. Um, but I did write something for my 500 Club before I heard the news. I posted a piece to the um, Village, which is a, the, the other writer's site I'm active in, one of the other writer's sites I'm active in. 
And, um, <coughs> Sorry. It was, that's okay. It was from uh, NaNoWriMo, the last one, NaNoWriMo I did. I'm kind of just, to keep my hand in writing, I'm looking over that. And um, I uh, edited someone else's uh, chapter, so I did some editing. And I also did, um, oh, I, I attended a, um, a chat from the Writer's Village, which um, was talking, it was a bunch of us talking about metaphors and things, so that was fun. And I'm doing some writing for pay for Seton, so that's good. I, that's nonfiction, but it's writing, and I'm happy about that. But I think that's about it. Um, though we are good tips and tricks. We um, want to thank somebody. Slightly for autobiography, though, quickly. Um, if you have not been responded to in the Ravelry, Ravelry group, please don't go away. I have just been very obsessively working on this sweater. I have not been really active anywhere online. I haven't been on Plurk. I haven't really been on Instagram except to like things because that doesn't take too much concentration. Mm -hmm. Anything that requires responding, I haven't been active in. Um, I have been very obsessively working on this sweater. I feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel after working on this thing for uh, two, well, it's not two years. Like it was a year and a half because it was April 2012. So for about a year and a half, I feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel. And all I want to do is work on this sweater. So if I have not responded to you, please don't be discouraged. Please don't go away. It's just this sweater is eating my life. Um, and until I get it done, I will probably be like one track mine. Yeah, I, I have been trying to stay up with welcoming people. Because um, she's a better person than I am. But I do it mostly privately through uh, PM. <coughs> and anything that is on the <coughs> board, because I feel like I need to think about what I'm going to say. Sometimes I don't have enough hours in the day. I've been working um, for Seton, and then I've been doing things for the house. We've had doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, Mike has been off with the holiday and all that, and when Mike is home, I don't do a lot more, a lot of that kind of stuff online as much. So I will try to get to you. Do not go away, as Talia said. We do answer. We tend to answer in bunches, mm -hmm. and then things build up again. So we will get back to you. It just takes us a little time, especially right now, mm -hmm. with all the things that are going on leading into the September is kind of a busy time for us. And we, we both are kind of like in that mode of, we want to finish certain projects for this retreat. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not, like, the first part is a religious retreat. But mm -hmm. we have a couple of friends who are knitters there. Mm -hmm. And the slightly egotistical part of both of us are, like, we want to show off our work. Um, yeah. This is the one, one time a year we really get to see a bunch of different people we don't normally see. Mm -hmm. And both of us kind of – and it, it's starting to get colder, so we get to wear sweaters more. Yeah. So it's like people kind of want to show off what we worked on. Well, and Taya, uh, Taya's really good at what she does, but I've, imp I've improved a lot in terms of I've branched out. Yeah, Mom is pushing herself more. So um, she's – because you've always had the tendency to be a little bit more – whereas I've always kind of started with the hardest – as evidenced by the fact I hadn't even finished a knitted sweater yet and I started the Vivian. I've always started with the most difficult I can, basically. Uh, Mom's always been a little bit more cautious than I am um, with what she starts with. So the fact that she's branching out a bit more. She wasn't knitting. You weren't knitting last time um, either. Mm -hmm. So No, I started knitting after the retreat. So this is, for her, it's a big deal that people see what she's working on, especially. My friends, I always told them I would <coughs> never knit. Never knit and never spin. He also said you never work on sweaters. Never work I need to sweaters. make sure I bring my um my spindle because um bring my mom's top, bring the top and the bottom. Well, the one I want I need the I need the one I borrowed for the okay yeah um because my mom's one friend um I knew her when we were growing up uh, we we knew her when we were growing up in uh, D.C. in Air Force Base um so preteen she's, she's the one who can do stuff in her head yeah yeah she's um, really good. But she was really disappointed when I didn't bring my spindle last time. And she told me, I got a message from her, you're bringing the spindle, right? So, so. we have to bring this. I don't think she gets a whole lot of people who spin and crochet and uh, spin and knit and all that. So Her daughters knit, but they're not there as much because they're grown up now. Oh, the one is like an engineer. Yeah, well, Claire's not home anymore. Yeah. 
And I, I, I don't think Angela's home much either. Anymore. Yeah. Um, it gets to a certain point where, you know, this not around as much. And I, I know she looks forward to it. So mm -hmm. that's my excuse for bringing to As you're sticking to it. Yes. I do not want to make my religious retreat a knitting repeat. Retreat. Repeat? Repeat, yes. I will do it when we come back mm -hmm. to the, to the uh, hotel. Room. Yeah. But I do not want to have the spinning and all that. No, no, no. That's for, you know. Now, I have my knitting with me because I tend to fall asleep in mm -hmm. quiet places. Otherwise, Father will be doing a talk, and I'll be like, that was very interesting. Great point, Father Ross. Yeah, don't ask, he won't ask you. Well, I quick. think that... Um, Maybe Father Mike will be here that Who year. is... Uh, uh, I'm having brain parts. I see them in my head. Well, it's them out of your head. Um, blast it. Um, <laughs> not Drew. Um, I don't know. The people, married couple, always look behind us. Castro? Yes, thank you. Liz. Lisa. Lisa, thank you. I'm not quite sure why I can't remember. Lisa and Tony. Yeah. Um, Tony was making fun of me last year because it was difficult to stay awake. Tony makes fun of me anyway. Yes, he does. Um, um, Tony and Lisa are, are <coughs> really close friends. Mm -hmm. I, I like them a lot. They're sweet. And he is a, he's a good sport. Yes, he I is. Have, we have a picture. I believe we have a picture of him. Oh, that's right. The year that I hurt my shoulder really badly, before he hurt his back. Mm -hmm. And he's standing there carrying his wife's bag, my bags. And <laughs> he's just standing, he looks like a pack mule. It's so funny. Well, the poor guy, he was hanging out mostly with his wife and a couple, a few women, you yeah. know. So it was just like, he gets picked on. Yeah, he does. Uh -huh. he does. He's such a good sport. But anyway. Um... I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to thank Rose Bob for Rose Bob knows what. Um, yes. yes, that was a very nice gesture. Thank she you. Very much. She knows what she did. Yes, and thank you very much. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Um, can you think of anything else? Uh huh. Uh, that's good because we're a little over an hour. I think we made up for our blahness last week. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. blah. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> blah blah blah. Oh dear. <clears throat> Oops. So, okay. on that note, yes, a very odd blah blah blah. Well, that's fine. Are you having issues? <laughs> yes, no. I lost Maybe it. Maybe I don't know. Can you repeat the question? question? What are you looking for? A stitch marker. I'll use this one. Okay, well, while Mom's looking for a stitch marker and we're attempting to say goodbye because she has a thingy with Blobby to do the thingy with Blobby. Well, I need my thingy Blobby. Not that thingy Blobby. I need it. That thingy Blobby. I need that one too. Here it is. Okay, so let me get my mouse out here. We want to wish you a very happy week and a happy week of knitting and crochet. Okay. And I think I need sugar. Yes. All right. God bless. This is Pen Hook and Needle. Episode 66, and yep. that's a wrap.